Hi, it's Toby from New Holland Projects again. I often get asked a very basic question. If you're wanting to start building, what sort of tools should you use? So I've got together a selection of some of the tools that I sort of recommend if you're starting building in 2023. So there's a number of tools you sort of can start off with um, and obviously work your way up. I've obviously been building for 14 years and I've got quite a selection of tools. First of all I'd say though is you need to get yourself a tool belt. This is a tool belt that's worn on the back like so and this will house basically everything that you basically will need for basic construction. Um, so I'm sort of telling this from a perspective in New Zealand, I know every country is different and even in New Zealand whether you're dealing with re residential or commercial it will vary if you're doing new builds or renos. So if you're starting out as an apprentice definitely talk to your employer or prospective employer what sort of tools do they expect you to have. But a good starting point is at least have a tool belt and then some basics on that. So I'll go through some of the basics that I would definitely recommend. I'm a right hander, so we've got a dominant side and a less dominant side. So on my less, left dominant, less, less dominant side, I have a tape. Generally want something like an eight meter tape. Don't want to go for a real cheap one, want to go for something for that mid range. Then you also want to go for a speed square. So when I started out, I used to use an adjustable square like this. Some people still use them and there's nothing wrong with them. But I've sort of transitioned to one of these and they're really good. Then you want a bashing chisel. Sometimes you want a good chisel, but often, more often than not, you'll find a bashing chisel come in handy. A set of nips to pull out some nails that shouldn't be where they are. Uh, couple of nail punches, a small and big one, often a really good idea. Over on my other side, so I've got a hammer. So lately I've been using this longer handled with the sort of straight end on it, east wing. I've had no issues with that. I started off with an east wing, which is the more claw style hammer. So there is a different difference in these as you can see. These have more of a claw, these are more straight. Um, and obviously even the handle length is different as well. I still use this um, for roofing um, as you can get under the nails really easy. As with this one if you're doing a lot of pulling out nails it's quite hard to get that angle in but if you're doing demo and you're wanting to like, use this to rip into something this is definitely better. So obviously it again depends what you're going to be using it for. Good knife was very handy. A ruler, I used a good rule, um, but any sort of ruler, whether it's the meter ruler, um, whatever, um, is definitely a good choice. I recommend a good rule, I've sort of been using that, and Ox makes their ones as well. A good pencil, I often carry two. So if you're ever buying pencils, you've got soft lead and hard lead. Hard lead is definitely better for concrete. As it just lasts a bit longer. I often use this on cement based products like Hardy's, etc. Normal pencil is just great for wood. Lastly, I do carry a vivid around. Um, not always essential, but I find it quite handy. And I also carry a ox pencil around um, for doing those real fine marks, otherwise, you're always sharpening your other pencil. So that's on the tool belt. So just a few other tools that I think would be really handy if you're starting out is a chalk mine. I have two different colours. Um, I actually think I run three. So I run black in here and I run blue in here. So there is differences in the strength of it. Black is basically permanent. Can't get washed off which is really good for marking out slabs. But you want to watch it as if you, you don't want to use it if you've got exposed concrete. Blue, however, will wash off. 
Um, so depending on where you're using it, there is different strengths of chalk for different purposes. So having a good chalk line is a good start. A pair of nips, um, these are actually some older nips I've had for a while, just to cut bits of flashing or tin, um, come quite in handy. When I started out, I actually had a full-on screwdriver set. I still do have one, but to be honest, I don't use it that often. I use this, which is just a screwdriver that you can put any of your bits that normally go into your drills in the end, and now you've got a screwdriver. I always like having a couple of bars for demo or lifting up things. A good flat bar like this, good length, is very handy. For smaller trim stuff, I like having a really small one. And I often file the ends down. It's often really handy to get those bits of trims trim off um, initially. A sliding bevel is often really good as well. It just helps you get those angles. If you are running a speed square, it does help you get your angles pretty good as well. But sometimes you can't get these in, and this is where the bevel comes in handy. Another good investment is probably a good set of drill bits. Um, so this one here goes from like 1mm all the way to 13mm, which is generally your normal chuck size on your drills. Good set of these um, will last you. You will find the smaller sizes you probably end up replacing um, as they break, etc., um, depending on what you're drilling. But good set of drills, very handy, and I use them on a regular basis. Another thing that I often use is a bit holder for different size bits. So you can buy these in a kit. I think most of the main brands make one. Um, some you can tweak, like for example this Bosch one, you can actually buy just the case and you can buy whatever bits suit you. Um, I do have a Milwaukee one I think as well, which has different bits in it as well. It just gives you a good starting point. Um, often on jobs you'll often get those bits supplied with boxes of screws etc and then you can hang on to those bits and put them in here as that one one quarter inch hex bit is a very common size um, and yeah we use it all the time so when it comes to brands of tools um, there is obviously a number to choose from whether it's Milwaukee, Makita, DeWalt, AEG um, they are all good in their own right I wouldn't say Every, any brand has the perfect selection of tools um, but one thing I would say is once you sort of start on one platform uh, if you've got started on that platform it's definitely easy to stay with that platform and if you're starting out I'll definitely look at some an apprentice pack or a starter kit um, often that's where you can save money when I started I bought a Makita 18 volt kit that came with about five bits so i think it came with a grinder it came with a skill saw came with a drill etc and a lot of companies do a brand lot like a package deal which often makes it a lot cheaper um, one thing i'd definitely look at getting um, starting off is a drill and an impact driver this is an impact wrench but um, basically works as an impact driver so basically use the drill to drill your holes impact driver to put your screws in. Sometimes there is situations where you will put your screws in when you drill, but a good combo to start with, you can often pick these up. I'll put a put a list of some prices below um, in New Zealand and also overseas, hopefully if I can find them. And so try and stick with the platform. When I mean the platform is a brand whether it's Makita or Milwaukee. So a drill and impact driver is definitely a good start. Sometimes you'll often get a kit that has those two and a skill saw. Um, that's something, you, those three tools are probably going to be the tools you use nearly every single day, um, whether you're renovations or new builds. Adding a planer onto that, if it comes in a kit or something you get relatively soon after that, it's probably another good investment, um, something you will use on a regular basis. I'll probably follow that with a cordless grinder. Um, you can use this for a lot of different things. You can put sanding discs on it. You can cut concrete with it. Smaller bits of concrete, obviously. Um, cut reinforcing, all sorts of stuff. Um, just another drill. 
drill from a different company. Multi-tool is something I'd also add in very early on. Um, it's a tool that probably out of my tools I'd say drill, impact driver, skill saw and multi-tool are the ones I use on a basically daily basis. Um, getting near the end of it, so staplers. Um, depending obviously on the work you're doing, renovations or new, you will use staplers in some way or form. Um, this is a staple I use on a roof, um, basically called a hammer tacker, which is really good. As it, you can sort of do it one handed, it's great to even put wall, um, building wrap on a building. They're really handy to have. You can also get battery staplers or um, hand staplers. I used to have a hand stapler till I broke it um, and then I upgraded to a battery one. If you're doing a lot of um, stapling work I definitely recommend going to a battery one. A lot easier on your arms unless you're wanting to develop massive forearms. Last tool I pretty recommend is a nail gun. So this is a Pazload nail gun. This is actually the one I started with 14 years ago. Still works um, and I do still pull it out. I have basically retired it now though because it's fired a few hundred thousand nails. If you check out some other videos, one I put up here, I have a couple of years ago changed to the Milwaukee nailer and hence why I don't really use this one. I generally use my Milwaukee one as the type of work I do, the Milwaukee one is just superior in my opinion. I haven't put it up against the new Pazload framers. Um, sometimes you can get a good deal on getting a framer and a finishing nailer. Um, but yeah, I would definitely re recommend looking at a framer first and it's something you can work towards getting a finish gun. Nearly forgot. So one thing I'd also recommend is a level. Levels are you can often buy these in a set. You're looking at a 1200, 1800, and a 600. I'll almost say once you buy them, you'll probably nearly use them every day on site. So a lot of these tools you'll probably have to supply. Your employer generally won't supply them. When it comes to PPE or personal protective equipment, things like safety boots, earmuffs, generally most employers will supply that stuff and it's something that you probably don't have to supply um, often the companies will supply that. So hopefully it gives you a good overview. That's sort of some of the tools I would recommend if you're starting out building and haven't got really an idea of what you need. So hopefully it helps help some people. And yeah, thank you for watching. If you like this, like and subscribe and check out my other videos.